Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu... Scheiße, das ist total... In der heutigen Sendung geht es um ein ganz besonders spannendes Thema und zwar um den Modedesigner Rudi Gernreich. Es geht um sein Schaffen, um seinen Einfluss in der internationalen Modewelt. Rudi Gernreich war ein in Österreich geborener amerikanischer Modedesigner. Seine Designs gelten weiterhin als die innovativste und dynamischste Mode der 1960er Jahre. Eigentlich bis jetzt, das ist ja nicht nur der 1960er Jahre, das war ja... Er nutzte Modedesign gezielt als soziales Statement, um die sexuelle Freiheit zu fördern. Auch in der heutigen Sendung wird es zwei Gäste geben, Adriano Sack und Stefano Pilatti. Adriano Sack ist Autor und Journalist. Er war Redakteur bei Tempo und Kulturspiegel, Chefredakteur bei BMW Magazin und bei Interview Deutschland. Seit 2015 ist er Ressortchef Stil bei der Welt am Sonntag. Stefano Pilati ist ein italienischer Modedesigner, der derzeit in Berlin lebt. Er begann seine Karriere bei Prada und arbeitete mit Mio Gia Prada bei Mio Mio. Von 2004 bis 2012 war Pilati Creative Director von Yves Saint Laurent Paris und anschließend Creative Director bei Hermen Gildo Degna Couture in Mailand. 2017 gründete er sein eigenes Label, Random Identities. Und jetzt übergebe ich an den Direktor des SMAC, Christoph Thun Hohenstein. So, welcome to the show of Jena Zoom Talk uh, on Rudi Gernreich. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, we have, I will uh, introduce in a moment Adriano Sack and Stefano Pilati. But first, let me give you an overview of the background uh, of this talk. Uh, at the MAC, which is the Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna, we currently have uh, the most comprehensive show on Austrian fashion design of the last uh, 40 years that was ever mounted. Um, it's, but it goes way beyond. Uh, it also presents uh, fascinating fashion photography. It showcases uh, the professors, the fashion designers who were and are professors at the University of Applied Arts Vienna. It's so also a big chapter, chapter in that exhibition, and it gives the floor to the so-called talking heads, major figures uh, in, the, in the fashion scene of the last 40 years uh, relating to Austria. Uh, but the show of Austrian fashion design, this exhibition also goes way beyond that, what I just presented. It has a key focus on Rudi Gernreich, a fascinating designer, Uh, he will be the topic of the conversation that will follow after my brief introduction. So Adriano Sack uh, is an author and journalist. Uh, he was editor at Tempo at Kulturspiegel, editor-in-chief at BMW magazine, and executive director at Interview Germany. Adriano is currently managing the style section of uh, Welt am Sonntag. Uh, Stefano Pilati is an Italian fashion designer. Uh, he, lives, he currently lives in Berlin. Uh, he started his career at uh, Prada, working with Nucha Prada on Miu Miu. Uh, from uh, 04 till uh, 12, uh, he was the creative director of Yves Saint Laurent, Paris, uh, and then the creative director of Emile Gilles Lozenia Couture in Milan, uh, before launching his own level random identities uh, three years ago. So I hope I did uh, a correct introduction of the two of you. Perfect. And uh, the floor is uh, yours. Uh, please start your conversation on Rudi Gamer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you, Christoph, for the very kind introduction. Uh, as you say, we are going to talk about an interesting <coughs> designer and it's a incredible pleasure for me to be talking uh, with uh, Stefano Pilati, a designer whose work I've been admiring for years. And I watched his last show in Florence this January and the fearlessness and radicality and beauty of this collection brought me to tears. So I'm very thrilled to be talking to you, Stefano. 
Uh, we, were supposed, we were supposed to meet at one point, but then the COVID started, no? Well, it, it happened sooner or later, now we meet. Uh, <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Um, so to start to jump right into the cold water or warm water, um, how did you learn about or discover the work of Rudi Gernreich? I, I discovered that uh, in the mid 90s, I would say, when um, uh, yeah, I would say when I started to work for Prada, it was more, uh, you know, it was brought up sometimes as uh, references, um, never, you know, to copy, but more uh, to be inspired by um, the use of graphics, you know, basically his approach to fashion. And this is the way that I uh, always appreciate it, you know, if you want to um study references uh while i was a product because they were always um ethically in a form of citations more than you know appropriation of ideas and stuff like that so um i didn't you know i didn't do any fashion school so everything that i've learned i learned that um you know i learned that working and uh and the fact that Rudi Gerhardt was a, was a um, designer of the 60s, um, you can imagine that in the 80s or in the 90s, you know, it was still quite early in a way, you know, to references, to reference, and especially the 80s in one way or the 90s in another way, they were um, very um, uh, progressive kind of, you know, years, one for the exuberance and then the other one for the minimalism and the use of, um, you know, innovation, you know. Um, and so that's why, you know, there were, um, uh, the, 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 that, that's where the interest came to reference uh, Rudiger Rakat Prada, you know, because it, it, it was a very, very strong form of minimalism, if you want, mm -hmm. you know, with a very, very, very strong and precise um uh message that it was rooted mostly in the 70s by the way so you know you also need to contextualize it you know like in the 70s obviously many things had messages that you know in the 90s they were not necessarily uh you know contemporary you know i mean in a way it seems like we uh sometimes we have the notion that uh, fashion or culture in general is a thing that moves from one point to the next to the next uh i'm not sure if not sometimes things go back and forth like a swing and um uh so i was wondering why uh would you say uh does rudy ganreich's work uh still speak to us what relevance does it have today but the relevance of us today is because was someone that uh, applied an aesthetic uh, coming from um, uh, not, not not coming from the classic uh, uh, fashion and breaking, you know. Normally, um, you know, from Monsieur Saint Laurent to uh, Robert de Givenchy or you know Courage, name it. You know, they were actually they, they were they were designers. You know that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they started to sketch card, you know, they started to sketch like many other designers. They started to sketch, they were like 10 years old and they made their, you know, passion and artistic expression. While, while Rudy Gerhardt being, being a, coming from the dance background, you know, all of a sudden he had also like a, a, a plus you know, in a way, because everything that was related to a study of movement or movement, therefore functionality of the clothes, therefore um, looking in a certain way, because on stage, you know, they need to say everything in just like, you know, the most synthetic way. Um, I think it's very relevant today, you know, like it can be, it can definitely be, I don't know if it's relevant, again, when we talk about relevance, you know, for me, there's not even a point to Talk about it in the sense that you know it's undoubted that uh, uh, that that uh, Rudi Gerhardt is a master of the sixties or the seventies, you know. So therefore, you know, this, it's part of the history of fashion, and I guess that every student needs to needs to understand it. What they find, if I wish, 
that they will see is how is the technique that you use that they were innovative, you know, because the, you know, they use a jacquard and, you know, mostly wood jersey and, you know, the way they was cut and so, and all this is very, is very precise. But what I hope, you know, that they will all understand is that in order to craft a narrative, you need to, you know, and, and, to, and to be able to synthesize it and, and put all the strengths uh, of your uh, expression in one garment, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of, of method. Of course, he had a space in the 60s and the 70s, you know, that, that nowadays no designer has, you know, it's like mega saturated, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, in, in that sense was also kind of, you know, it, 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 it's also like the designer, that, you know, that, that, that made it in the States. He was honored for this, for, you know, honored citizen from the city of LA. And, you know, it's, it, it was also, let's, let's not forget that the 60s, the 70s, even the 80s, you know, there was the, the idea of the American dream, you know, in a way, you know, America mm. was the place where everything was kind of happening in a progressive way. So, you know, it was definitely fertile geographically, you know, for him to be, to be there. And I, and, and I hope again, it's relevant today because, you know, talking about genderless, talking about uh, uh, from day to evening, you know, all those kind of, so excuse my French bullshit, but you know, it's basically uh, it more, more a question of, um, um, be proper and you know minimize uh, minim, minim, minimize the, the art of dressing up uh, but uh, uh, in a way always uh, uh, keeping keeping very intact what 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 the message was for from his clothes you know mm -hmm. You mentioned that he uh, started as a dancer, dreaming to become a choreographer. And I was uh, very intrigued by reading that uh, his first job was to clean corpses in, uh, in a morgue in LA. Uh, it reminded me of the story of Leonardo da Vinci who sneaked into to the morgue in order to understand the anatomy of, of human bodies. Yeah. Um, how, how important do you think like an like a in-depth knowledge of the body for it's, it, it's, it's super important. It's super important. I mean, he, he decided to learn it that way. Uh, it was not necessarily my approach, you know. Uh, I, I've learned it doing fittings, you know, and I've learned it, and I've learned it uh, also myself in a way, you know, like the moment that you, the moment that you buy an item, um, you should also be able to interpret it at your, uh, you know, coherent with your personality. So all of a sudden you understand why high waist is different than low waist or mid waist or, you, you know, and when you start to have, you know, and, and, and in your profession, if it, if it becomes your profession, like it became mine, you know, um, Either as you, when you start, you know, I, 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 again, I didn't learn it that way, but you know, like from, from uh, uh, selling in a store to uh, making menswear uh, and do fittings to, um, you know, do styling, uh, you know, at Vogue and all, and all in, you know, in all those steps that, that define my career and my knowledge in fashion, you know, you, you really start to have, uh, to understand that also everything is quite uh, um, uh, is, 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 is full of rules that mm -hmm. uh, they are um, uh, part uh, of the history of fashion, you know, so, you know, you start to know that the skirt behind the knee, below the knee, there like needs to be five, four fingers below the knee because four fingers below the knee is like 68 centimeters from the, the waist. And, you know, and if you want it longer, well, it becomes 72, but then you need to make it, you know, and so you work with measures and, you know, and then, and then you start to work with tensions as well, you know, like the tension 
of you know the shoulders that they put on the chest or on the back or depending on you know also how a person is um, you know anatomically uh, 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 made you know mm -hmm. the reality is that uh, you know fashion uh, you, you know the body but at the same time uh, um, in, in a way, you need to, unless you are a tailor or unless you are like a, you know, a couturier in the sense like of the whole couture, but basically a tailor, you know, um, everything at one point gets standardized, you know. And so again, the mini skirt is 45 centimeters, you know, the slit is always 17. And then, you, you know, all these kind of, you know, and then you, for the stitching, you know, like we, we go, we go with odd numbers, Japanese go with pair numbers, you know, like all these kind of things. You know? So it's interesting, but I don't know how much it helped him. I guess I, 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 I didn't know this about, mm -hmm. about him, you know, but I guess it, 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 I mean, I don't know how much it helped him to be a designer, frankly speaking, you know, maybe, I don't know, you know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it's complete, you know, I have a time to, to, to see the relevance of it, but of course for him it worked. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, his work, like I, I guess for a lot of people is uh, very deeply linked uh, to the image of um, the model Peggy Moffat, um, who he worked with uh, very often. Um, how, uh, what role would you say she played in the perception of Rudi Gernreich? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, one, one, one role, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a role, but one, de definitely one uh, thing that is for sure is that uh, not knowing for real uh, how uh, or who had a role in building the image that they built, you know, uh, you know Rudy Garak also because of Peggy Moffat, you know, because he was the visual of, you know, and Peggy Moffat as a good model and friend, you know, should interpret him the best, you know, because that was um, almost like from the beginning of the relationship. Then, you know, who took over the other uh, or who didn't give uh, enough space you know, between each other, I, I don't know. You know, what I talk about is the fact that, uh, I mean, she was the perfect, uh, perfect uh, um, uh, representation of his fashion because, you know, he was not uh, um, curved. She, you know, she did not impress, you, you know, was she androgynous? Yes and no, because at the same time, her movement, which I believe that they were also influenced by him being a dancer, you know, they were very graceful, uh, you know, and feminine, and, you know, and so they fit the clothes, you know, she didn't wear men's wear too, you know, uh, she always had, you know, it, 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 it's, it's crazy if you think about it, because they're doing unisex, but in order to, to show that they're unisex, they show it on a man and on a woman. You know, while, you know, like, you know, when it, what is it now? 20, yeah, like 50, let's say 50 years later, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't even see the gender, you, you know what I mean? I don't call it unisex, you, you know, so there, there is a sort of revolution, but that was also like part of the narrative and, and unisex was also part of the revolution that, that, that those, that, you know, those decade, decades were, were, you know, going through, you know, and, and the pen, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that, it, it, even like the fast fashion at that time, you know, was unisex, you know, so it's not, mm -hmm. uh, it was a reflex, you know, like, like, like Nina Simone says, you know, if you're an artist, you need to reflect the time, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, I think it's probably something people might tend to say that he was very much ahead of his time. Uh, I think he was just in his time, because if you look at what happened in movies and pop culture, uh, this is basically what happened, or at least the, the interesting people, uh, they were like uh, starting to question a lot of things that uh, were the standards before. Um, 
what I found interesting that he claimed that he wanted to desexualize the female body and yet he is known or one of his very famous designs uh, was the uh, the swimwear that uh, left the woman almost naked or half naked um, how does it make sense to me it makes sense because what i read when to say the feminized you know is almost like the opposite that i did at Saint you know in a way the feminized i believe that for him was a question of like um the feminized in order to not objectify the woman in a way that from the from the 50s you know onwards or for many many years you know between the corsets and the heavy bras and all this you know those there were symbols of you know of femininity you know and there still are you know what i mean they're female you know uh uh, clothes, items, you know, so the feminized means like uh, the way I read it, you know, and that makes sense for me, you know, considering his work, the feminized is like, okay, you know, is uh, freedom, you know, is freedom from all those garments that they, at the end of the day, they objectify you, you know, so when I say I did the opposite of Saint and then I went on that I put them back in courses, you know, but for example, you know, I was also very, very tired of that, that low waste kind of thing that for me didn't make any sense anymore because, you know, the, the, uh, the male demographic, you know, was in crisis, you know, uh, gay was not anymore, you know, if you want so much in the closet, so it was, you know, it started to, had to compromise even, you know, it started to, uh, let's say, put relevance on, on what the macho and patriarch, uh, patriarchal, you know, kind of dynamic were and all that. And so I was like, well, well, the woman needs to be less defeminized in order to conform to, you know, but I, I actually wanted to empower them with what they always had as an attribute, which was like, you know, having the waist and, and curves and, you know, and uh, to not sacrifice, you know, just that simple, simple, simple um, details, anatomic details that is, that is like, you know, the waist that is, um, you know, waist uh, that, that is very uh, small compared to the rest of the body, you know, in, in mm -hmm. men are more straight, men are straight, you know. And um, do you see, I mean, he, uh, in a way, his background is, uh, is very interesting. He, he was born and grew up in, in Vienna uh, between yeah. the world wars, uh, which I always uh, felt was a very specific and special place with uh, like artists, uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, the Lost Empire. Do you see traces of uh, that history in his work? Um, no. I mean, in, in his work specifically, no. Well, but, you know, when I, I was thinking about it actually for, you know, uh, like, uh, and I will include also Helmut or, you know, like, uh, you know, why Austria? No, in a way. But then for me, it started to make sense when I started to think about the Middle Europa. Hmm. You know, like the commerce, you know, in the Middle Europa, you know, the commerce was also very much on textile and, and you know, and so I believe that the Northern Italy, Austria, you know, was like that kind of, um, let's say, uh, industry in a way, let's put it this way, industry, you know, that, that, that flourished and that give a culture, uh, you know, to appreciate uh, beauty made through the clothes, you know, so the passion of the clothes, it doesn't surprise me that comes from, uh, from, from, from Austria, uh, because, because like, let's say, uh, already for kind of century, at least two, you know, uh, when the fashion was embedded in all the, you know, uh, uh, basin of, of North, you know, North of Italy and, and Austria and, you know, a little bit of first. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, I mean, in, in, a, in a way, uh, it seems that uh, Rudi Gernreich was, um, I mean, you mentioned rules uh, before, uh, rules in fashion, like how long yeah. did 
as Gerby and so on. But I guess there's two different sorts of rules. One is gravity and anatomy that you can't really change. And then there's other rules like uh, what can you show? What is a female outfit or a male outfit and so on? And uh, the second sort of rules, I think uh, Rudi Gernreich broke a lot of them. Like he introduced new materials. He questioned the question of gender. Uh, yeah. how naked uh, people can or should be. Uh, which part of this, like, uh, which part of his body of work uh, influences you in your work? Of this work, interest in my work. Yeah. Meaning, meaning if I reference him? Well, not necessarily directly, but what would you say? This is a... Uh, um, uh, a way of thinking or approach to design that uh, uh, that that I find important for my way of looking at fashion. For me, as to as to as to do, uh, I'm sorry if I take my time because it just said you, you know like references to me they come like you know history I don't know what to say it so, you know and so mm -hmm. uh, Rudy Gerreich is a, 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 you know is part of my formation because I studied him and what I uh, what I take from him uh, but it's not that when I do something I'm like oh that's why I go to Rudy Gerreich or stuff like that you, you know you just don't I mean I don't do it uh, mm -hmm. But it is true that what served me, let's say, uh, that part of, you know, him being part of the history is the fact that um, it was brave, it was progressive, this, this, this idea of genderless, you know, is more actual than ever, you know, and uh, even if between, uh, um, uh, you know, experimenting with fabrics or, like I said, you know, also technique in making clothes, you know, like uh, minimalize, you know, with just a zip instead of buttons, you know, and all these kind of things, you know, for me, uh, those are, you know, they become part of the fashion lexicon. So if you are a fashion designer and you don't have that fashion lexicon, I don't know which kind of fashion designer you can be, but you, you know, I mean, it, it helps me for sure, you know, like, uh, you know, you 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 reference the the the, the boldness and the, 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 the belief in you know simple gestures that they can change you know the 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 face of fashion or the face you know, maybe you don't know the face of fashion but definitely you know with consistency and integrity you know and evolution of what you're doing you know you create a body of work then in fact you can understand that it's like actually. Uh, uh, very important for the story of fashion, for the history of fashion. Mm -hmm. There's one other aspect that I find interesting. Uh, Gernreich was also co-founder of uh, one of the first LGBT uh, organizations um, called Mattachine Society. Um, do you think that has something to do with his work as a designer or is it a completely different thing? You know, uh, I do respect Rudy Gerrick as other masters and colleagues, you know, the moment that, uh, like is, like it is in my case, uh, you, you know, my form of expression is fashion. And so everything that I uh, feel, am, uh, look for, uh, imagine, uh, design, uh, has to do with yourself and what you believe. So you translate all that into your fashion, you know? And so, and I believe that also is impulse, impetus also to, to, to go from dance to fashion, you know, was because there was that kind of uh, creative uh, pressure and urgency you know, that his imagination, you know, went, uh, you know, a bit uh, further than simply uh, the movement, you know. And so uh, I do, I do believe uh, that if you translate, you know, if, you're able, if, you, if you cannot help to translate what you, you know, what is your 
creativity and, and urgency to express your creativity in fashion, then you better be someone else, you know? So for him was so, uh, is so evident, it was so evident that uh, because also the fact that he was gay, definitely it was intellectually uh, <laughs> more progressive and, uh, and uh, especially in those years. And so, you know, I, I do believe that what he translated and what he believed in his fashion, you know, could also uh, uh, be part of his personal life. Uh, and so, and embracing, you know, the, the idea of minorities that they are categorized or, you know, well, the form of expressions are always very, uh, suppressed and oppressed, you know, and all these kinds of things. So, you know, and especially when you become a bit exposed, you know, and famous and you have a voice, uh, you know, like right now, but then was also, uh, it was, was also something important, you know, not, 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 not everybody need to be, uh, you know, uh, let's say an activist, but it is true that to, to a certain point, if you are a human being that feels a certain responsibility, and I would say also gratitude to how you achieve success, you know, you want to go give back, you know, and so, you know, and that giving back is not only in the uh, close, because unfortunately, there is also that contract, you know, uh, that includes money between your artistic expression and that, is, that, you know, that it pollutes a bit everything. But the reality is that if you do those clothes with a purpose, then that purpose can also be, you know, um, directed somewhere else and, you know, in support of somewhere else, something mm -hmm. else. Um, Rudi Ganerai said one thing that sounds super simple and yet somehow I thought um, it sounded interesting. Uh, he said, I realized you could say things with clothes. Do you agree? Oh, 100%. 100%. I think, I think, it, yes, 100%. Of course. I mean, I wouldn't do my job. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, absolutely. You can say, well, I, I, I add that, you know, fabric speaks to me. Fabric speak to me, you know? So when I buy, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I choose fabric, you know, they, you know, I do everything with it, you know, when I like it, you know, like in the sense that, you know, and I move it and I check the light and I see how it falls and I try to rip it, but it doesn't. And then I put the needle so that I can see how much you can sew it. And then I put it between my lips because I want to feel, you know, the maximum sensibility on, you know, on the skin and all these kinds of things, you know. And so for me, they, they speak to me, you know, so if I get bored of that fabric, I throw it away, you know, so... Do, do you know what I mean? So fabric speaks and clothes definitely speaks. I mean, they should, they shouldn't be really speaking about you. You know, they should be you. You know, so uh, because they can, you know, clothes sometimes they can speak about you in a very bad way. In a very bad way. Yes, exactly. So they better speak in a good way. <laughs> you know, and and that has nothing to do with being beautiful clothes or or. or of bad clothes. It's just like a question of like, uh, how can you not see yourself, you know, like, uh, you know, I don't know. So of course, yes, they speak. <laughs> how did you learn to, to see yourself? I'm sorry? How did you learn to see yourself? In which or way? In, which way? In, in the camera. <laughs> in the video, yeah. <laughs> what what do you I, mean? I, it's a it's a process of like getting to know understand yourself before you actually know what looks good on you and what is the right way of dressing for you no uh, or did you always know well i guess in my case it might be particular you know um because i guess i always knew i don't know i was a pain in the ass since <laughs> or I don't know, you know, it was always like, you know, I never wanted what they wanted to buy me or, um, um, yeah, you know, you know, it's a process, you know, like, uh, I also discovered myself, you know, you, you know, you don't know, you know, you don't have the brain to process all that, you know, I can say these things now, you know, uh, what, what I know 
is that I've, I've been so careful about, you know, feeling good about what I was wearing, even if there were moments where, you know, there are like, uh, um, you know, trends, for example, in my city, or, you know, that are also like uh, coming from music influence or, you know, whatever. So, you know, I actually um, join and experiment those moments, you know, between punk and neuromantic. And then, you know, in Milan, there was also this uh, Americana kind of thing going on and da da da. And, you know, uh, but at the end, I like kind of everything. You know what I mean? I like the mods. I like this, the, the, the creepers, but I like, you know. So, um, uh, you do your things and then you, you know, you realize that you're always a bit different. You know what I mean? And that difference uh, creates, when you're young, creates a bit of destabilization because you're like, oh, wait, I'm different. So... I'm not gonna make it. But on the other hand, it also reassures you because it's something that you can't help it to have it. You know what I mean? And so the moment that you all of a sudden, and it's mostly uh, from the adult world. Uh, uh, you know, I started to work when I was 16. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, I was wearing things that also other people were wearing, but I don't know, it was just different, you know what I mean? And so they, yeah. you know, I started to be taken from one place and one place also thanks to what I, you know, was wearing and, 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 and how, and, you know, and so for me, you know, being, um, um, yeah, to dress up and to be cute, you know, it was, for me, it was a, it was a door, you know, it was, you know, it was something that I could, uh, not sell, but but I understood that you know it could give me like the possibility you know, to, 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 to 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 go in and be confident on the passion that I started to uh, learn that I have. You know? mm. And um, do you actually own or uh, uh, pieces of Rudi Garnreich, or are there any you would wear? I, I, no, I owned, I, I owned, no, I owned only what Matthias gave me, <laughs> or maybe I stole, I don't, I don't remember if he gave it, I stole them, but I stole, I stole a bunch of stuff that I loved, uh, yeah, but you know, I, I, I mean, I know Rudy, uh, you know, and I know, and I know a lot about Rudy also because of Matthias, you know, so, um, and I, and I saw a lot of, you know, stuff from the archive and all that, you know, and I, and, you know, I mean, few are terrible, the majority are fantastic, you know? So it's, um, men's where I, I would say that it was that successful, you know? Um, because it's true also that if you want to portray unisex on a woman, being the woman also like the one that you should have support, you know, like as a, you know, in the, in the evolution of what she was, you know, what, what, what women were, were, were trying to earn day by day, you know, it's, it's a different story. Then on a man, you know, it becomes slightly more clumsy, let's say, you know. <laughs> and so uh, what I would wear, I would definitely wear those jersey pants, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I won't, I won't wear the, the monokini, I would look terrible. <laughs> I should, you know, I'm, I have a certain age now. Um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I would wear a lot of things that are actually designed for women, that's for sure. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of little jacket, I mean, love, you know. A bit younger, I would probably even go head to toe, but now it's a bit different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, but my young self, I would have worn all the women clothes, all the women clothes, like all of it, all of it, no problem, no problem at all. Loved it. Right. It's, it's very easy. It's very easy to wear. It's not a big deal. Okay, Stefano, thank you so much. That was really fun talking to you. Um, and um, uh, good luck with the future uh, uh, 
activities. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing from you again. And, All right. Uh, now back to Ankati Koi. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Adriano. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Gegen Ende jeder Sendung haben wir noch eine kleine Überraschung für euch. Heute wird es der Film Basic Black sein. Das war der erste Modefilm, der überhaupt jemals gezeigt wurde. Mit der wunderbaren Peggy Moffitt. Schauen Sie sich ein wunderbarer Film an. Ich habe es schon gesehen, es fand ich ganz hervor. Wir sehen uns nächste Woche wieder. Und ich gehe zu meinem Rudi Gernreich Dress noch in eine schicke Bar. Bis zum nächsten Mal.
Heute dürfen wir euch den Film <lacht> Süß und der Kindersendung. <lacht> <lacht>